Okay, we have Yuji Namura, who's joined us for the TRIO National Board Meeting here in Philadelphia. And he's flown in, flown in from Japan with his cameraman uh, to share with us the story of organ donation and the TRIO chapter in Japan. So Yushi, please, thank you very much for coming out and we really appreciate your sharing with us. Thank you very much, Jim, and uh, thank you very much for giving me uh, this uh, little bit of time so that I can share uh, where we are in member of TRIO Japan. Well, I'm, assume, I'm assuming <laughs> corner of a large city of Tokyo, there is this town which is known for two things. One is this temple that gives out a lot of blessings to the particularly for the elderly folks. So the people here all the time are uh, coming for prayer and then wishing longevity and good life. And also this place is known for those blossoming flowers called sakura or cherry blossoms. <laughs> and then uh, just last night I found there's a secret cherry blossoming spot in Philadelphia, which may be even better than the one in uh, Washington, D.C. <laughs> but the fact I know is those trees here in Washington, D.C., and then what you're seeing here are from only one tree. They don't they don't produce seeds. That's all done by so-called cloning. And uh, it's originated from here. And then this kind of funny uh, stone <laughs> kind of thing here is saying that this is the original place of this cherry tree. Oh, wow. On, only one species of cherry tree, uh -huh. which is from here. And that's where our office is. And then uh, the third floor of this building, let's see. Ah. Test your Japanese reading of it. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have an image oh, of what yeah. it says? Wow. Yes, you're right, trio. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this is a view from our office. That lasts only for one week in a whole year. And this is like this year's spring version. And then you see we appreciate the flower right from our window and like this way ah, and then this looks kind of familiar yes which was actually behind me over there you see this has been appreciated every moment every second of it from our <laughs> right 2012 25th anniversary presentation yes. of a lifetime achievement award to yuji and uh Hmm. Ah, bag, yeah. Flying down there. It should be framed, but uh, it doesn't have to be there. And then uh, really we should frame them uh, on the left hand side wall, as I want to share very quickly. They are the people who we had the honor of uh, and the joy of supporting so that they can have a second chance in their lives. Mm. All of them, unless they are saved by going overseas, mm -hmm. that was the last moment of their lives. But mm -hmm. all of them there are now still living in very good shape. And this is a kind of funny tradition of ours. This is supposed to be enlightened uh, Zen priest from ancient times. And uh, oftentimes, some, when you wish something strong, we find this uh, doll with no eyeballs. But on one, one hand, you see the eyeball. So when you wish with your wish, you give one eyeball. <laughs> and then when it's fulfilled, He's going to get another one. <laughs> so the one cornea is not transplanted yet. And behind that, the, uh, there's oh, another sorry. familiar sorry. face. <laughs> Our old poster. When he visited Japan, we had a special meeting organized. And then now, from here, the program. I was working on this project after my class the very first class in the fall in my college that ended in a 
afternoon of last Thursday, and in the midnight that day, I left Japan. And uh, only then I could prepare this. <laughs> so on the flight and then what now? So now you are proofreaders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. You know what it is like to write in foreign language and uh, limited time and uh, day and night all you know mixed up. <laughs> so I really expect you are really warm and considerable heart. You shouldn't read it with your eyes, but with your eyes of your heart and the kindness. Just try to get. I try to squeeze the what I'm gonna say in those kind of funny English, but anyways. So I, I want to at first take a look at you know, how we are doing this year in terms of organ donation. And uh, maybe I could sit down and then... <coughs> you want to put it here? It's Thank okay. You. Thank you. Oh, maybe I need... Well, I think the picture is more important there. And then even I don't know how to put it, these words in English. And yesterday from Howard I learned this is called the donation by uh, from brain death and then also cardiac, uh, cardiac, cardiac death, yes. But uh, since I didn't prepare it that way, you know, yeah. <laughs> please forgive me and I just uh, have a kind guess about it. January, this number, I wouldn't read the figures, okay. And February, March this way, and then April, May, June, July, and now uh, this is the latest uh, information we have. As of uh, August, oh. this is uh, these are the figures of the whole nation. Is it all in one hospital? No, in a, in a nationwide, maybe 100 hospitals all together. And then how, how many transplantations took place? Heart 26 and heart lung, lung, lung 23. Oh, you can just. We did them, we said, <laughs> more or less. Yeah. Well. In the rest of the few months, they, they, they may be increased, but as of now, it's like this. So those are the major solid organs, I think, also here. We do in the same way, more or less. Let's see how they are doing in Japan in terms of heart transplantation. Uh, please just uh, check the figures, I wouldn't read out. It's too complicated to read everything on it. And then also I put the how, how, how many days they have to wait, average. And then, so <coughs> these are the waiting days. Heart, 978 to 75 days. And let's see, kidney next. And the 5,305 mm. days. And, and also, did they the, uh, the other one would show that some people got to wait more than 20 years. As I heard, after that three years also. Is, after 5,300 days, what's the, what, what kind of outcomes do you have after the transplant? Uh, that is, uh, after the transplant, you, you mean the success rate? Uh, that's there. Survival. One year success, eighty-eight percent, and then five years survival. Oh, excuse me, year by for example, you said years. What is it? Seventy-five percent. I guess seventy-five. Yes. You're not getting on a list in Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> liver, and then there are some cases of liver and then kidney transplanted together, but mainly, mostly liver transplantation success rate and a waiting period of 520 days. Average, that is, some people got to wait more than four years. And uh, for liver, that's 520 days. And let's take a look at the lungs. Average waiting. I'm just emphasizing the waiting days, 902 days, statistically speaking. And then for lung, 902. And nextly, small intestine studies. Uh, let's see how they are doing. And uh, waiting period could be about a little over one year of waiting. And pancreas. 
well, I've gone on to 183 days average. What does that mean? Uh, too many days. <laughs> okay, uh, lungs, two years and five months, that is. The liver, one year and five months. Kidney, 14 years and six mm -hmm. months. And heart, two years and eight months. <coughs> if you're lucky enough, surviving <laughs> for those yeah. days to reach the... Yeah, but you know, that's not that bad, the, the kidney, 14 years, uh -huh. because you wait 10 to 12 years in California. That's, I, I, I was rather surprised about yeah, that. You I mean, know. Uh, yes. you're doing good. <laughs> On the other hand, the kidneys, it doesn't have to necessarily involve in the brain death donors. Um, yeah. No, it does. You, know, you, have to, you have a DCD or that you have to get them before they... Living. Well, yeah. living donor. Living donor. Living donors, donors. Living donors. Living donors. absolutely, yeah. Cardiac death donors. Yeah. And brain death donors. Yeah, right. But in Japan, this brain death is a really a critical brain issue death. to accept. Yeah. That's also a little difference there. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm repeating the same thing, so I have to. Sorry about this lousy editing. <laughs> <coughs> How many people are blessed to have a chance of saving their lives by the organ transplantation every year, Japan and the United States? I figure out a little numbers here. How many recipients are you getting by year? This was the number I received. Maybe minor differences, but more or less, I think. <coughs> and then in Japan, some 300 people. But of course, the population of the United States is much, much, much larger than Japan. So let's even it out, because it's two times, two and a half times more population than the one in Japan. So that means if we are to practice transplantation like you do in the United States, we should have at least more than 9,000 people saved their lives instead of 300. Or, if I put our present situation of Japan <laughs> enforcing back into the United States, how many transplantations can you get per year in the entire nation of the United States? 750. Mm -hmm. So this is the reality, and this is the difference, and this is how many people are gaining or are missing the chance to get the second time to live. And this is the total number of uh, organ donations in Japan, and then there are kind of green parts and the yellowish part, and the dots represent green are the brain death donors, and then also yellow in cardiac death donors. And there's obvious change in the course of last one, two, three, four, five years. Because the regulation or the, the act of the transplantation changed. And then they started to accept <coughs> it. Un until then, we had to have written agreement from the donors. That means that you have to write it down to agree to donate your organ. Even when family members want to, no, no, no. Organs are your own things and you have to clearly express it in writing. Therefore, in the case of a brain death, it was a very limited numbers. But then, for last more or less five years, it changed. If the family agrees, regardless of whether the actual person uh, left the written agreement or not, they would accept to transplant those organs. And then that increased the number of uh, donations uh, from brain dead donors. So now those are the figures, but still a uh, very, very limited number of 287. Uh, yeah. what, are, what are the major restrictions or what, what holds people back? Are you Brain get... dead. Are they really dead? They must be still alive. Their body is alive. How can, how can you tell that if brain is dead, the person is dead? Difficult to accept. Even among, I, I think 
in terms of the three things, I think one, ordinary people's feeling, of course, the others and the loved ones are still bodies warm. Very difficult to accept the definiteness. But theoretically, medically, well, <laughs> that goes <laughs> beyond my mind, would be the attitude. But most serious thing is it seems like quite a few medical professional people are not really believing that brain that is really the and last period. How about cultural or religious? And then that comes, I think, after that. And um, it's, uh, in a way, <laughs> it's not too complicated, but it's very much to do with emotional and the traditional value. And then I myself, being a Christian and then theologian, I'm, I'm glad to take at least a 90 minutes time for my class about it. But the reason why I'm saying wishy-washy thing is that very often they want to push it as a kind of, oh, that's cultural thing. Oh, that's just a religious this and that. But I don't think that comes as a kind of major problem. It's more, as you see, the Japan is scientifically or technologically pretty advanced nation as probably as good as the United States. That means they are trained scientifically and they are get the kind of modern education. And, and therefore, uh, there is, I have to accept, that kind of spiritual or religious reasons behind, but that's, that wouldn't be a big problem. And, but particularly, the every religion, when it's proper, they emphasize love, you know, in, in one form or the other. And that all and transplantations, nothing against the true deeper sense of love. So there shouldn't be any conflict. But people sometimes, are, I shouldn't get into that, but even a political reason, they want to use religion to kind of, you know, do something funny. And that we have to see, and we shouldn't overemphasize it. But if you have any want to discussion, I'm glad to <laughs> share my time. But let's go back to my presentation. And uh, among brain death donors, which age groups are there? Um, those the teenager the kind of becoming a brain death donors, like a case of that, those years, 1997 to 2013, was seven of them. And in their 20s, 22. In the 30s, 36, and then 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and uh, not disclosed. And there's only one below 10 years old. That means if the, the if you are uh, the, uh, the patient or the potential recipient is younger than 10 years old, and the liver now you can we can have a kind of living donor, uh, but for heart there is no chance. So for the one chance in those years, how many years will it be? in five years or something. So practically, it's impossible to get the chance. And uh, what are we doing, including TRIO and also other organizations concerned with organ transplantation? One is through internet system, we are encouraging people to sign up for donation. And then also in the case of uh, brain death and then cardiac death. They can choose the one. Secondly, only in case of cardiac death. Thirdly, I disagree. I don't want to donate organs. Other choices they can put on there. And then, nextly, if you are willing to donate, which organs are you willing to donate? Yes or no? You can go through this on computer screen. And then also, <laughs> there is a fun quiz to promote and for a deep understanding of what uh, organ donation and transplantation is like. How many people are on a waiting list? A, 100, oh, A, 100, B, 1,000, C, 
10,000. And if you say, hey, probably 100, book, no. <laughs> OK, how about 10,000? Right. <laughs> Correct number is this. Because these days, the kids are so much kind of getting into this yeah. kind of way of thinking, so we try to promote sure. some deeper understanding to this, you know. Sure. And then another one, of course, is that as you are doing, probably we learn from you guys through uh, the driver's license or the health we, we carry national health insurance card all the time. May I go back and ask you one very quick question? Yeah. If the if the potential donor says I disagree <laughs> to donate my organs, does that still allow for the family to be approached and asked if they will even override the donor's decision? If it's written in form, no. Otherwise, I'm not. It's up, up to the families to decide, you know, okay. the impression of, oh, yeah. If okay, they say no. It is. Therefore, when you particularly disagree or you don't believe in this yeah. practice of medicine, you have to do this to check. I don't, I don't want to get involved in this. No, no, I just, sure. Okay. If an individual says that they want to be a donor yeah. in writing, can the family say no after death? They can, but most likely they wouldn't. They'll go by the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the kind of tricky thing about family, family is not always one. There are a plural number of family members, of course, you know, dad, mom, and uh, siblings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult very often to get all in unison to say, yes, I know. But if the actual person left it in written form, it's rather difficult to say, no, I don't think he wanted to donate the organ. Well, why don't we fulfill his last wish kind of thing, you know? So the whole family coming very easy and comfortable to reach to the donation. And also, here's the thing. It says, this is, I don't know in the United States, but in order to promote, I, I still I'm not 100% sure, but uh, we came up with this option of if I were to become a donor, and then in that case, if my immediate family members are in need of organs, they get priority. And then, it, so if you want to take that, you have to write down that I want to get priority to my family members. In that case, otherwise, there is no priority. Just the most needed patient anywhere would be the one to receive. But if it's written here, within this limited number, center is actual person and his parents and immediate parents and then also spouse and child are given of this priority. And the third way is to promote donor cards and stickers so that they can express their desire. And then uh, we've uh, circulated that many cars so far in the course of the last uh, 20 years. That covers more than the population of Japan presently. And then they can reach to the point of saying, victory, we won. <laughs> yeah. And then even this kid, he got the heart transplant. And then can you believe it? He's on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then this girl still struggling after heart transplant because uh, she's now nine years old. And she never got up in her lifetime after the transplant for the first time. So I wouldn't really draw people's attention to for her legs, for example. But obviously, her legs are not fully developed. So right. now, thanks to the heart transplantation, she can now stand up, and then she can, for the first time, walking, and then living like an average kid. And, and, and him we saw yesterday in New York City at the Columbia University Medical Center, and hoping to see her very soon in Japan. And then today, and here, that's it, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
Lucy, thank you very much. That was excellent. I, I offered him the option of slides. He says, well, I don't know if I'd have a chance to put something together. Look at this slide presentation. <laughs> he is always so humble and so amazing. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions you'd like to ask of uh, Yushi while you have this opportunity? You, Yushi, last yes. night at dinner, yes. uh, one of the things you indicated uh, took me by surprise. I, I guess I hadn't thought about it, but you indicated uh, South Korea had a very strong transplant program, and it got me to thinking, well, what about the rest of uh, the Tigers area of, of Asia? Uh, where is Japan on it, and where, how, how did they rank? Can you give me a, a feel for that? Okay, very good question. I, I, I wish I could give you a really hopeful answer. But just, and then I haven't really analyzed it. I tried to, but I couldn't really get the answer. But just suggestion, which might be totally wrong. I hope, you know, it's that, uh, yes, the Korea got the really, uh, the organ transplantation as, as good as the United States. And then this institution in particular, uh, Howard Nathan, did a great job bringing them up to today's level. And if Koreans could do, why couldn't we? I, I don't mean to get into some kind of competition, but, uh, I'm related to that. Just, I can give you another list of uh, facts. In Korea, please don't connect it immediately, but just I'm dropping it. Probably a hint of what I would think. Christian population is more than 30%. In the Philippines, Christian population is 98%. In China, particularly on a coastal line, which are very well developed and westernized in a way, Christian population is more than 15, probably more than 20%. Japan, Christian population is 0.6%. I'm a Christian here. That means you have to go out and look for 200 Japanese tourists to find another one. I'm not saying Christian ideas better or Buddhist ideas. Ah, as I said, I don't really get into that kind of, <laughs> kind of superficial argument. But let, if you give me just a half a second and then summarize, because I am from kind of Buddhist background as well in my ancestry. For Buddhist, the real enlightenment means Okay, let's face it, there are so many pains and sufferings and uncomfortable things in your life. That's life. Let's accept it gracefully. Don't struggle to change it. And the more pain and more suffering and more conflict comes in, and that messes up your life, not only your life, but other people's lives. So take it as a destiny, and then live gracefully. And then also, when you see somebody who are kind of beaten by such a hard luck of life, what can you do? You can't really change his life, but feel sorry for him, and then share your that feeling of sorry. Without this person's life, don't try to do this, just leave him. So this, as much as I can do, if I'm not really a medically trained person, <laughs> Thank a little you. bit like that. Question. Yes. The medical community you mentioned is not as positive toward transplantation as we have here. Is that because the thinking of the medical community is impacted by this cultural and religious mindset that is part of them? Um, I said yes, but. I, I, yes, but I, I don't want you to think as if they got some religious restrictions, uh, taboo, and then they are caught by that. I don't think they are caught by that because I am a Christian, I am trained theologian in, in the United States. That's why I can see that they are caught by that kind of value, but they themselves, they don't. And then they think it's so old-fashioned. It's a medieval kind of way of thinking. If you are kind of respect religious value, you know, it's modern society. They don't think, but still they. For example, uh, maybe I don't want to take 
a long time, but my personal experience. Okay, thanks to the fact that my wife is from the United States of Pittsburgh. <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. her father was headhunted. He was working for US Steel, and he's a civil engineer, building bridges and things, designing it. And then when she was, my wife was in a, a college in East Coast, he was headhunted to uh, Dallas, Texas. And then that made, him, made me a chance to approach uh, Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. And then also, Pittsburgh, uh, Dr. Stalzer's institution. <laughs> so I have uh, two great choices to go. And then I realized a uh, winter in Pittsburgh is so cold. And then when you drive the cars, you cannot park anywhere in <laughs> Pittsburgh with uh, all those hills. But the, in, uh, the, in this point. And then after transplantation, I went back to Japan and I was so much welcomed, particularly by medical professional people to share my experience as well. So I was so happy to carry my all those medical records and share that without inhibition to doctors. And then one doctor came and saw kind of Lucy, I'm sorry to tell you. But please tell me the truth. I'm not a person I can think of this but yes. You didn't have to get liver transplantation. They made the money out of you mm. in the United States. That's how they do medicine in terms of business. Mm -hmm. And from this data, no Japanese transplant doctors would consider transplantation. You could have gone a few more years and then consider transplant. And the next year, since my folks are living in Dallas, when I went back to Dallas and I met my doctor <laughs> at Baylor, they are good guys, so I just brought my back to them and I said, hey, Japanese doctor said this based on the record you gave me. And then what they said was, well, you say, how, about, how, how are you doing today? You're hopping around like this. Because you and we decided to have a transplant at that moment. If that were delayed by a half a year or one year, you may be still surviving, that means biologically alive. But the chances are that you are not hoping around and coming overseas, but lie down in bed or on a wheelchair. Meaning, so in, in Japan, you shouldn't mess up the people's life. But finally, if this person almost like dying, you have to go on this life, see how, how and then transplantation belongs to this part of the treatment. When in the United States, living the breathing, and then that's still living, biologically speaking, but if the patient after transplantation couldn't go back to a kind of enjoyable life, participating in society, being active, again, this active, not sitting back and feeling sorry or envious or something, but you yourself can get involved. What's the life really means? Even therefore, the doctor, doctor's judgment, that there's that kind of unrealized value system behind their mind, and also among patients. My culture, meaning that everybody in this culture thinks the same way. And it just, I'm on the kind of edge of two cultures. That's why I could see both, and then physically experienced. And then also, I, my whole, my body is supported by Daliva, who was brought up in this culture, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> so that liver is kind enough to train this part of myself so that I can have a kind of little different ideas than average Japanese colleagues and friends. <laughs> I appreciate that was a beautiful sharing. Uh, I oh, thank you very much. I hope everybody appreciates, as he said, he's a, uh, a teacher, and uh, you didn't have to go to Japan to take that class just now. <laughs> and I, I have uh, reservations about the poor students come Monday morning when he has to be back in Japan, fresh, to teach them after this long trip. <laughs>